And my poem is called Her Story. September 30th, 2001 was the day she was first left alone. And at the same time, her first day on this earth. With her dad who was fighting overseas and her mom who had died during childbirth, she was left to her grandparents. Immediately, her dad came back to raise her. When they met, he saw his wife and his daughter's eyes. From that point on, he decided that he would dedicate his life to her because he never had the chance to do that for his wife. They were the best of friends and had an unbreakable bond. She grew up with all the love and support she needed. They would play for hours, building forts or playing on the playground. Whenever she would fall, he was right there to pick her back up again, dust off her knees and get her back to playing. When she was eight, her almost perfect world came falling down around her. Her dad has been diagnosed with a fatal cancer. But no one could tell her. They just said, they just said he was sick, because how do you tell an eight-year-old that her dad, her only parent, is dying? Her dad fought for two long years until finally giving in. Before the funeral, she hadn't realized what had happened, but seeing him lie there in complete stillness had led him to the realization. Years had passed, and she entered high school. She wanted to be the best at everything, not for herself, but for her father. But she was criticized, brought down by those who couldn't do what she did. The words of others stuck in her brain when she was trying to think. The look seared into her memory, coming back to her when she had her moments of triumph, bringing her down so that she was at the level of unhappiness the others were stuck in. It was at night when she needed him the most. She needed a shoulder to cry on and someone to tell her it was okay just to make her feel better. She needed arms that would embrace her and someone to stick up to her and make the bullying stop because losing your father at the age of 10 and being the cause of your mother's death is traumatic enough. And all those who torment her have both of their parents and that's still not enough for them. She needed her best friend back and suddenly there he was, clothed not in a suit like the one at the funeral but in all white. He held his arms out to her and she ran to jump into them. As her feet lifted off the ground, she awoke with a start, cruelly brought back into reality and left to lay there alone in the dark. This is not my story. Nor is this the story of someone I know. This character is fictional, but there is someone out there who is living under these circumstances. So I didn't write this for me. I was for the girl who takes and eat her, eats her lunch in a bathroom stall so she doesn't have to go out and face her peers. I was for the girl who wakes up every morning without parents to hug her before she goes off to school. I was for the girl who is too afraid to tell her story. Because people who need to tell their stories the most are the ones that never do.